everyone, I'm Nikki and I'm here visiting Flight Instruments here in Mesa, Arizona at Falcon Field. They're the masterminds behind the Cessna Sweeps 182's brand new avionics panel and we're here to check it out because it is pretty much finished. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. I'm here with Matt Layton. He's the owner of Flight Instruments and Avionics, and he's going to tell us a little bit about himself, how he got into avionics, and his thought process behind the AOPA sweepstakes Cessna 182. Where do I start? Uh, getting into avionics, uh, I was prior military, and I did some avionics work in the military. I got out and I said, I never want to touch electronics again. Uh, went into the medical field and I realized in pre-med that it just wasn't for me. Uh, so I stopped doing pre-med, I dropped out and went back into a and uh, And about halfway through, I opened up my own shop doing maintenance. It took about four years for me to realize that I didn't enjoy maintenance and I just wanted to do avionics. Can you tell me a little bit about your thought process behind the AOPA sweepstakes Garmin panel? Yeah, you bet. When you guys called looking for a shop to uh, redo this panel, we, we were excited. Uh, it, a lot of people think an avionics shop is just installing avionics, but it's so much more. The wiring and wiring in avionics is probably the simplest part. It's the design and fabrication that holds the avionics. And it, it's funny that most of our investment into this shop is for metalwork and fabrication, not tooling to install avionics. So we're excited to be able to put the design together and put together a plan that will keep that retro look uh, and still uh, hold the avionics nicely. Uh, and, and Garmin supplied such a great set of avionics for this aircraft. Well, do you wanna show me a little yeah, bit about what's going on? You bet. You know, the early model Cessnas have such a large panel. Uh, so I wanted to break that panel up into different pop outs so it didn't look so bare. Uh, it, we installed the GI 275s, so it doesn't take off a lot of real estate. So I wanted to kind of blend the panel and keep that retro look. Uh, the original panel had a rolled edge and had this floating panel. Well, we don't want to float the panel because uh, the AI and the HSI, it's a digital AR. So we, we hard mounted the panel. We um, hammered down the edges on all of the pop outs to kind of give it that retro look. And then we picked a good two tone that matched the interior, complemented the interior and complemented the yokes. Awesome. So what Garmin avionics do we have in here? Garmin put together such a great package for this aircraft. Uh, this is what I would have chosen for this aircraft. We've got Garmin GI-275s for the attitude indicator and the HSI. Uh, that removes your vacuum pump and all of the vacuum lines and filters. And then we've got a GI-275 for your engine monitor. That's paired with a GEA-24 engine monitor adapter. And then the stack avionics. Uh, this GMA 345 audio panel is my favorite audio panel. We install that in most every aircraft. Um, and then it pairs with a GTN 650 XI and their new GNC 215. The GNC 215 is the color display and the upgrade from the GNC 255, but it's a Navcom radio. And then in the back, we have a remote transponder. We just didn't have enough room to fit the, re, uh, the panel mount transponder. So we did a remote transponder and you can change that remote transponder via the 650. Oh, cool. And then, you know, for all our modern pilots, the autopilot. Yep, it has the GFC 500 autopilot with a pitch and roll servo. It still has manual pitch trim and uh, it's controlled through your GMC 507 mode controller. A uh, great autopilot, uh, it will, uh, work off from your GTN 650 and your GNC 215. And one of my favorite things, and I think it's one of your favorite things too, keeping the Cessna glove box. Yeah, we tried to water jet a logo. We looked at some 3D printing um, logos and, and it, with the time constraints, we just came up with uh, laser engraving the Cessna logo on the glove box, but a new glove box. Uh, every every pilot wants a glove box in their panel, so we wanted to keep that retro look, and we matched the angles to the panel and um, built a whole new metal glove box. Looks like you guys got some new controls here. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, McFarland. McFarland donated uh, some new throttle prop and mixture controls for this aircraft. They also uh, did some cabin air controls and cabin heat controls. We laser engraved them. Uh, McFarland does that. We just wanted to match the font that's on the aircraft, so we did it here. Um, this is their new uh, 
throttle and we're waiting for their new uh, fuel primer that they just released last year. Oh wow, awesome, finishing touches. Yep. Well, you guys here at Flight Instruments definitely knocked it out of the park. This design is exactly the resto mod look that we were going for. And anybody that sees it at AirVenture and all the other events that are going to be coming up, they are going to be so stoked, especially whoever takes this baby home. We are, we are excited with how it came out. Thank you so much. That's a great compliment. Well, do you want to show me around the shop? Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Let's check it out. With any new avionics project, this is where it all begins. Tell us a little bit how you get started on one of these projects. Yeah, yeah. So we have to start with some dimension. So we pull off the panel and scan it with the faro arm uh, and get an X, Y, sometimes Z coordinates into SolidWorks. And then we build up a panel. Um, and I, I like to do 3D renderings of panels just so I can see what the panel's gonna look like, how everything's gonna fit in the back. And while I'm designing a panel, I'm also uh, designing the graphics. So I want to make sure that the graphics look good on the panel. So I let the graphics lead the whole placements on the panel. Uh, and this is how I do it. When I'm done with this, when I'm done with the design process, I just take it downstairs and throw it in the water jet machine and start cutting out of, uh, out of metal. Once we're done with the design process for the G-code, uh, we send it to the machine and hone or zero the machine uh, to the start of the panel. Uh, this machine uses water pressure and sand uh, at 60,000 PSI. It has the capability of cutting 12 inches of steel. So aluminum panels are easy. Uh, it's super accurate and it takes about five minutes to cut the panel. So after the panel's been cut, it comes in here to be machined, right? Correct. Yeah, this is our sheet metal shop. Um, it, and we've got a whole bunch of different brakes here for different applications or different panels, some shears, some um, bandsaws uh, and drill presses. Every panel is different, uh, whether it's a Bonanza panel and we're uh, welding in the kick out for the avionics or for your aircraft, for the AOPA airplane, um, we wanted to keep that retro look. So we wanted to roll the edges. So not only will the water jet machine cut metal, it will cut anything you want it to cut. So we cut some phenolic blocks to um, hold the panel in place. And then we hammered the edge all the way around to get that retro look to uh, get that floating panel look. But all of that stuff is done in this in this room. This is the next step of uh, fabricating a panel. We've, we've got it powder coated. Now we've got to mark it. Uh, and this is just a traditional screen print machine. So we make the screens uh, in our dark room and squeegee ink through the screens onto the panel. Now there's other ways to mark it, but this is how we started and we still use it sometimes. So this is the process that you use to mark up the sweepstakes panel. Correct. Yeah. If you're not screen printing, well, um, the other option is to laser. And the laser works really great on dark color panels. So we lasered all the black with this. And then we also lasered the light color panels, the tan, and then backfilled it with powder coat. So after the panel's been cut and powder coated, it's ready for wiring. Correct. Yep. We bring the panel up here and we build the mounts to hold the avionics, um, support brackets to hold the wire, and then we wire up the panel uh, to disconnects. Now we use disconnects because it helps us with troubleshooting. And while I'm building the panel and wiring the panel, the guys are downstairs wiring up the aircraft and it allows us to get those airplanes out quicker. All of the audio jacks go through a disconnect. All of the auto autopilots go through a disconnect and we have specific disconnects for each item. So when we're done with the panel, the panel gets installed and gets plugged in and we usually have power on the panel in a couple days. That's awesome. Well, Matt, it's obvious that you put in so much time and passion into making our dreams of this Resto Mod panel come true. Once again, you guys absolutely knocked it out of the park and I think everyone's gonna be so excited to see this, uh, to see this panel. Thank you. You know, that's the best compliment. That's what I want to hear every customer say. Um, we wanted to take your vision for this plane and exceed it. And I think that we did. We're excited for everybody to see it. And everyone's going to be able to see this airplane at AirVenture in the next few weeks. And you're going to be there as well, right? I am. Yeah, we'll do some questions and answers. And, and if you can't make it to AirVenture, you can always reach me at Flight Instruments. Send me a picture of your current panel and I'd, have, I'd, I'd love to put together a package for you. Awesome. Thank you.